Hi, my name's Frankie. Um, I'm going to be talking about Backstop today. So I'm going to be giving you the overview to the project and then Michael is going to be giving you more detail on the bacteria that we're looking at um, and also on the work package that he's on because I'm on work package three and he's on work package one. So hopefully you'll get a good, well-rounded understanding of our project by the end of our two presentations. So let me introduce you to the team. Here we all are. Look at our lovely smiley faces. Um, and we've got four work packages. Um, like I said, I'm going to be talking about work package three today. Um, and what's great about Backstop is we've got this real range of different scientists taking different approaches to really understand AOD in its full, you know, in, it, in its fullness. So we're covering a, a real range from, you know, pulling apart the beetle all the way through to understanding what oak trees mean to us. So. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have some really interesting outputs from this project. And today I'm going to talk about why we value oaks, how we understand how we value oaks, and also then this incoming threat and why understanding this threat is so important. So, oak is our second most common species found in the UK. Um, would anyone just in your head have a guess of what you think the first one is? Give you a couple of seconds to think about it. The answer is birch, interestingly enough, yeah. And oak trees are so important because they look after 2,300 different species. So they're a real keystone within our forests. And while we can see that things like leaf litter can reproduce the same ecosystem services as oak leaf litter, so for example, just a, a mixed leaf woodland generally, they're quite similar species found in the leaf litter. In terms of the oak tree itself, it's really vital to those ecosystems. And we've got some beautiful oak trees across our country. We've got oak woodlands, we've got famous oaks like Major Oak in Nottingham. And not only does it have that ecosystem value to us, but it also has a historic and cultural value. For example, think how many pubs are called the Royal Oak. And the reason for that partly is because Apparently King Charles II did hide in an oak tree. And uh, you can even find a descendant of the very oak tree he reportedly hid in, in Shropshire. So not only does it protect our native species, hold a place in our cultural and historic heart, but we also see it used in branding everywhere. For me, I was actually brought up in Guildford, so this Surrey logo in the middle there is really common. Um, I remember seeing that on bins, on, you know, your flyers, on, on letters. But we also see it on things like furniture and the Woodland Trust because it holds such strong cultural value and it shows such, such positive values, I think we put, you know, the idea of it being robust, of being trustworthy, um, all these different identities. It's been important to the Druids, Romans, Kings, and like I said, it's still very prominent today. However, oak is threatened by acute oak decline. And like I said, Michael's going to talk more about the role of AOD and also the role of the beetle, which is um, what you'll see in our gorgeous little logo at the top there, um, and, and how that affects today. So I won't touch on that anymore. I don't want to steal this thunder, but as you can see, locations being affected by acute oak decline continues to rise and given um, modeling based on the climate and the conditions, we expect that to continue. And one of the great things about Backstop is we are also looking at so what package two, for example, is considering those um, contextual impacts, for example, drought. And this is a tree here, an oak tree suffering with AOD. So there might be possible solutions to how we deal with AOD. And work package three is looking at how we understand the knowledge, the attitudes and the actions regarding oak trees. Because if we, we might have some great solutions, but if we don't connect it up with the people who are gonna put those into practice, then really, you know, what's the point? Just as we could all be sat around the table just hoping that something might change. So Work Package 3 is uh, going about this in a couple of different ways. First of all, we've been doing stakeholder mapping and reviewing the literature, so building on what was done as part of Action Oak, seeing what new publications, new understandings we have in that field, and also having a look at who are the different areas, different people, what are the key stakeholders, what might be there, their interests and how, how do we contact and, you know, and engage with them. And there's a couple of different ways we're going to be engaging with them. So first of all, we're doing a, a tribute, similar to tributes to trees last year. We're doing a working name, Ode for Oaks, 
and I've just stuck the beginning of a lovely little poem in there to get your, your brain started on how you might have your own Ode to Oaks to really pick up the values that we get from the general public and how they feel, how they connect to their oak trees, be that the leaves or the acorns and anything in between. We're also going to be running a survey with the general public. Then moving on to uh, land managers, we're going to be conducting interviews with them to understand how they currently manage their oak trees, what their oak trees mean to them, and also how they might manage them in future. And the influence that we get between you know, the views of the public and the views of the land manager and, and how they might affect each other. I mean, we can all think of a situation where a tree's been taken down and the public have turned around an absolute outcry. Along with this, we're working with Future Oaks, I know we're hearing from today, to tie in with their survey and then with ours to make sure that we're not just reproducing the same thing and making sure we're really getting strength between the partnerships and that shared, um, shared approach that we can get from different surveys that are going on. So these are the intended outcomes from Work Package 3. And like I said, it ties into this bigger picture of really understanding everything that goes on and goes in and around AOD. And we're working with, well, you can see everyone's logos along the bottom there. It's a great collection of people. So hopefully by really understanding the public and the land managers perspectives, we can get a good understanding of, of how we get these practices into, to get these learnings into practice. It's about understanding the cause, the solutions, and making sure that we have a successful response so that we can all keep our lovely oak trees. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, thanks, Frankie. Let's move on to Michael's uh, presentation and we'll take questions at the end for both of you if, if that happens. Um, so, Michael, you can share your screen now if you're here. You mentioned a pub, Frankie. Now, what I, you'll have to fill me in on what is that? I don't, it's been a while. So, we get quite a lot of pubs in this country called the Royal Oak. Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, and that's pubs, pubs in general are a bit of a mystery at the moment, right? So. Hi, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can, Michael. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you put it into presentation mode at the moment, it's not. Yep, there you go. Okay, good, great. Okay, dokie. Um, so Frank has given such a nice uh, introduction to the project. Um, I'm going to focus a little bit on work package one. And really, this is trying to understand how the beetle interacts with the bacteria uh, to actually try and to transmit this disease from one oak to another. Um, so let me introduce you just quickly to acute oak line from a scientific perspective. Um, and it is quite a complex disease, and then it involves both the bacteria, and it's a, a consortium of bacteria that uh, cause acute oak de decline, as well as the interaction with the beetle, with a gorilla's beetle, and the oak itself. And it's really trying to understand this relationship between these three, uh, uh, you can say, organisms as such, and, and uh, how oak decline actually progresses and gets transmitted. Um, the disease mainly affects uh, older oaks, 50 years plus, but it can also affect younger susceptible oaks as well. Um, the main symptoms, uh, well, you, I, I think you saw on Francesca, I had the same picture as I do on the right-hand panel here, is this uh, uh, weeping black fluid from the trunks. And this is a characteristic symptom of uh, acute oak decline. This along with the D-shaped exit holes of the gorilla's beetle itself which you can also sometimes see with acute oak decline. Um, trees, once they have acute oak decline, they actually uh, deteriorate and die quite quickly. It's usually within four to six years, <clears throat> but some level of recovery has been seen. <clears throat> so there's always hope, I guess, in, in the future and trying to find a, a way to treat AOD. Um, as I mentioned before, the causal agent is quite complex. It actually consists of a number of bacteria that work together along with the beetle. And these are Brunneria goodwinia, Ranella victoriana, and Gipsiella quis Um, These are all three, these three species are the most common species of bacteria that you'll find associated with acute oak decline. And again, as we need to understand the role of the beetle, which, you'll see, um, which I'll show you a picture of in the next slide, uh, and its role in how it transmits uh, the bacterial agents causing AOD. So I guess the main hypothesis associated with, well, one of the main hypotheses associated with uh, AOD and what we want to achieve with work package one is trying to understand this relationship between the bacteria and the beetle. And my part of the work is going to be taking a look at uh, 
where are these uh, bacteria associated? Are these bacteria associated with the beetle? Where, where do they actually occur in the beetle? And do they occur across all the life stages of the beetle? And for example, I've got the eggs, larvae, <clears throat> the adult guts, ovipositor, and then even the frass from the beetles. And, and ultimately, we want to see does the beetle actually vector the bacteria itself? And you can see the head of the beetle popping out of it uh, as it emerges from the bark of an oak tree. So I'm going to just go quickly into how we're going to go about doing this. And I'm only going to speak to one component of Work Package 1 and not the whole of Work Package 1. Um, the first thing is to get hold of these beetles. And it's quite uh, hard. We've, and we've got a group of entomologists that really help us out a lot with gathering um, oak bullets and logs that have been infected with these beetles. And we hatch them out in cages here at Forestry Research. And then we maintain them in these cages on the left-hand side. Uh, feeding them oak leaves and giving them sugar water and water so they're very happy beetles and they go ahead and they lay eggs and ultimately when the larvae hatch we reinfect them into uh, oak logs and for testing. Um, we're actually going to use these larvae for testing and other work packages as well. Um, so from there we need to look at where the are the bacteria located and, and like I said we'll then dissect the beetles to get out the gut and ovipositor and collect the frass and larvae and all the beetles. And um, for our study we just divided the beetles up. We've done some work this year already, also I said last year already. Uh, and we divided the beetles up into a number of groups. Uh, the first group was a set of virgin beetles. These are beetles just hatched out of the logs but haven't fed yet. So we want to know what bacteria are there prior to feeding them. Uh, we then uh, fed some of the beetles oak leaves from the forest around forestry research. Uh, we also had some lab-grown uh, oaks which hadn't been exposed to the environment. Uh, and these so we fed to the beetles as well. One group was just as is, another group where we had the oak leaves coated with AOD bacteria. Let's just to show you quickly what the dissection process entails of getting all the bits and pieces out for your DNA extractions and also culturing of uh, acute oak decline bacteria. Um, you can see the separation out of the um, hind gut from the ovipositor is quite difficult to do. And uh, yes, it's, yes, I need a steady hand for that one. Uh, and finally, you have the ovipositor in the third window and across all the way to until you get the final uh, whole gut uh, out of the uh, beetle itself. Uh, we then do DNA extractions uh, from all these uh, samples. Uh, we also use whole beetles. We even do a beetle wash to see what's on top of uh, what's actually attached to the beetle. And then do some culturing work, bacterial culturing work to try and identify some of these bacteria. Um, and then we also do DNA work to try and identify these uh, bacteria using things like 16S DNA sequencing and so on. Uh, we also have developed a Q, what we call a qPCR, a quantitative PCR method, where we use uh, fluorescent <clears throat> probes to identify uh, the different species of AOD bacteria. And I just started some quick work from the DNA extractions that I've done from these different groups. And what you can see here is that the AOD bacteria consistently occur right from the virgin beetles, right through all the different groups uh, within the gut and ovipositor. Um, and I'd love to say that this was a, that was a great result and we thought, well, and we thought, well, this is excellent. AOD bacteria must uh, exist inside uh, the beetles themselves. Um, it was heavily prevalent in the forest as also in the spiked groups as well, showing that the um, AOD bacteria can be transmitted not only from the adult beetles through to the eggs and then into the larvae themselves, uh, which uh, would insinuate that a the beetles do carry the AOD bacteria and could transmit uh, AOD itself. However, um, we cannot uh, make this conclusion as yet uh, because we still have not been able to culture uh, live AOD bacteria from these beetles. And we've had discuss discussions in the group on how we can actually get this uh, improved. And we hope that in this year, uh, we're gonna actually be able to look at culturing techniques and then isolate these viable AOD bacteria. Without a viable bacteria, uh, we're not, it's not gonna transmit the disease anyway. It's just the fact that there's some DNA there. Uh, so what else are we gonna be doing? 
we're also going to be looking at uh, all the bacteria associated with the beetles. We want to get a picture of what these beetles are carrying as a whole. And then also we want to look at a proper uh, a vectoring study. And this is where we're going to use the eggs and the larvae from uh, the beetles we're going to capture this year and do a vectoring study on um, a model system using oak bullets uh, to see if we can get the beetles to transmit the AOD bacteria and cause the lesions associated with AOD itself. Thanks.